Welcome to IOS 5 application development. Now the first thing that you need in order to start developing apps for iPhone and the iPad and iPod Touches is you need to get the most recent version of Xcode. It's free and what you do is you go to the App Store and when you get to the App Store just go into the little search box and type in Xcode and it will show the results and you're going to be looking for the Xcode under developer tools. Now mine already shows installed but if you don't have it yet you want to click on it and download it and install it on your Mac. Okay once it's installed on your Mac then you want to fire it up and get it started. So once you start Xcode you get the opening window, the welcome window and uh, just to point out that it will always show you what the version is of Xcode that you're using. So to develop for the iOS 5, you'll be working in version 4.3.2. So at the time of this recording, that is the most recent version. Now when you start Xcode, uh, it will present you with this menu and I typically leave this turned on because I find it helpful to use this to start new Xcode projects. And this will also show you the most recent list of projects that you have created and saved and had been working on that you could easily jump back to and open up quickly without searching for them. So what I'm going to do is start with create a new Xcode project and we see a list of templates. Now templates are files that you can use to quickly start a new development project from. So it can save you a lot of work depending on the type of application that you want to create. You can also create an empty application which will be just the absolutely bare bones basic and then you have to add everything in from there. But some of these other ones give us uh, some built-in, pre-built in code that we can use to quickly get an app up and running. Now when you're working in here, um, since we're focusing on mobile apps, we want to make sure that you're in the iOS section for projects and you make sure you're in the application option to show us these templates available for iOS apps. So for this example, just to walk through and get familiar with the Xcode interface, I'm going to choose a single view application. And in future tutorials, we'll get into using some of these other templates. But for now, I'm just going to choose a single view application and click Next. Okay, then we're prompted for some information. Uh, first of all, is a product name and then a company identifier. Now the product name is the name of your application. So I'm going to call this Hello Xcode. And then the company identifier is typically your domain name of your company or organization uh, in reverse order. And what happens is that makes up something called a bundle identifier and that uniquely identifies your application between other iOS applications. So for example, if mine is com.pinchtapzoom.helloxcode, well, it's actually adding that in. You can see as I type this in, it's creating the bundle identifier down here based on my product name and my company identifier. And I'm going to make the class prefix blank for now and then we can choose which device family we want to develop for. So we can see iPad or iPhone or Universal which will be for both and since we're just starting out I'm just going to stick with iPhone and we'll look at Universal apps later on in some other tutorials. We want to make sure use automatic reference counting is checked off and that will help us with some memory management and storyboards I'm going to leave unchecked for now. Again, I will uh, work with storyboards in a different tutorial. So right now we're just keeping this as a basic simple application and we'll introduce some of these other things as we build in complexity. 
So I'm going to click Next and it asks for a location of where to save the file to. So I'm just going to put it on my desktop and click Create. Okay, now that it's created the project, this is what the screen looks like that you're presented with. Now Xcode is an IDE, an Integrated Development Environment. And basically that just means that this is a, a software application that has everything that we need in it in order to develop our applications. So it's integrated, it's all bundled into one, one application. So what we're going to do is look at the user interface and describe where things are because there's a lot of things going on in here and it can get a bit confusing at times. Okay, so the names of some of these things that we have going across this top section is the toolbar and that's where we have our project status which you'll be able to see in this area here. So as it's building information or if we have error messages or warning messages, we'll start to see some of those up here. Uh, we can also run our app on a simulator or this is where we can also change the option to have it tested on an actual device. And then this is where we can build and run our app and test it. And then we have some icons over here that will allow us to adjust the view area that shows below here. So now along the left hand side we have the navigator. The navigator is where we manage our files and groups and all of the other information that goes with our app. So you can see our project name up here where we have Hello Xcode and we can see that the IOS uh, target is for SDK 5.1 and we have a folder with our project name and this contains our class files and our interface file. We also have other subfolders in here with supporting files that will take a look at some of these as we need to. And this is also where we can put in additional files like graphics and sound files, things of that nature that our app may use. Frameworks, right? Uh, since our apps are on small devices, we don't want our file sizes to be large. And so the way Xcode is set up is that we're given a basic set of frameworks, the more common things that are used in development. And then when we need to add some specific things, then we can add in additional frameworks for that support. So for example, when we want to play back sound, we will add a, a sound framework so that we'll be able to access and play sounds. So we'll add frameworks occasionally in here to support different functionality that we're adding to our app. But this helps to keep our file sizes small. And then you can see under the products folder, what will eventually happen, have is a hello Xcode app file. And so this will be the executable file or the file that would actually get installed on a device. So this navigator area over here is going to show you all the files uh, that have to go with your project. Now let me just show you when I saved my project file, right, it created a folder on the desktop and I'm just going to move that up here so you can see it. This is the folder that contains all of the project files. So I'm going to open that so that you can see what's contained in there. Right, our project file name is called Hello Xcode and the file name is Xcode PROJ. So if you are working with something and you want to open up, if you double click on the Xcode project file, this will open up into Xcode. Now in that folder, if I expand that, you can see some of the files that are also in our navigator over here. So we have our, what our class files are, our H and our M files, right? And you can see viewcontroller.h and viewcontroller.m. So these are the files that actually contain the coding that we'll be working with. So everything that's in this Hello Xcode folder should stay together because this 
Xcode project file relies on using these other files in order for it to work properly when we're working or building apps in Xcode. Now in here we have um, some of the setup information. It's kind of like a, an iTunes type of look and feel to it. And you can see some of the basic information that was in the setup, our bundle identifier. We can change versions as we improve or make changes in the app as it's being developed. Uh, storyboarding will work with in another video. Uh, we can determine the orientation of the device and upside down is kind of frowned upon. Um, not really a very popular way of having an orientation because if the phone rings then the user has to flip the phone the other way in order to talk on it. Uh, but it is a possibility of being able to support that type of orientation. Uh, app icons and launch images. You know, this is the icon that shows up on the screen that the user taps. Uh, and launch images is the image that shows while the app is loading. And again, we'll do another short tutorial specifically for the app icon and, and launch images and image sizes and things of that nature. Uh, but this area here is also the editor area. So when we're working with some of our code files, I'm just going to pop into one uh, quickly. Just click on it here and this code area updates to show the content of the file that is clicked on the left. And then we have a utility tab over here. This is where we have an object library where we'll be able to add objects from this to our view and our view is in our nib file. It's pronounced nib, but it actually has an XIB extension. And this will show us the user interface, right? So we have different objects that we'll be able to add in here. I can add um, like a segmented control just by dragging it over. And I can add sliders, things of that nature. So. Uh, we can add items and we can resize these different panel objects here. And this area has several buttons going across the top to change the kind of information that we see. So we'll be changing this to get to different features and settings for different things in our interface design, right? And then um, this button right up here, show or hide the utilities. If you tap that, that pops it off and on. Uh, we also have a debug area. When we tap that, it pops up at the bottom and we can kind of see error messages displaying there. So you can turn these things off and on depending on what you are interested in seeing on your screen. This shows and hides the navigator where all of your file information is, and then we have version editors, which we'll play around with later. And then there's an assistant editor. Popping the assistant editor off and on lets us see sort of a split screen of a couple of different things. Okay, so uh, just basic names of what things are so that when we start to work and I reference them, you'll have an idea of what they're called. So we have uh, the navigator, area, we have the editor area, and we have the utility area, and we can change the way things look by toggling off and on some of these buttons on the toolbar. So now that you're a little more familiar with the Xcode interface, you can move on to the next video tutorial on creating a simple app in Xcode.